Hi everybody, I'm Beth and I'm so excited to have you here with me today to share a wonderful foundation that I found last week just by accident, but I've been wearing it ever since and it has really answered one of my number one problems, which is being almost 65. Because when I was in my 50s, I could wear any kind of standard foundation or BB cream and it didn't really look craggy on my skin. It didn't particularly make me look older. Although Wayne Goss always says that foundation of any type always makes a woman's skin look older. And that was fine in my 50s. I guess I had a little more aging room. But in my 60s, it can make me look kind of as old as Methuselah sometimes when you have a standard foundation because it goes into your fine lines and wrinkles and can kind of crack when you smile. It's just not a pretty sight. And before I get into sharing this little wonder worker with you, I did want to show you the outfit that I have on today. And here it is. And I have some jewelry on little tiny stud earrings. And actually these look better than my diamond earrings. I really do like them. Everything here is from Amazon. It is super comfy, especially when you have a day of just staying at home or going out, running around shopping, that kind of thing. This sweatshirt is super comfortable and it does say champion, which I think is kind of a nice, nice positive statement for the day. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the 50 plus beauty family, I hope you consider joining. And when you click that little bell, it just sends you email notifications of my future videos. Okay, let's get into this and I will tell you what this wonder working foundation is. And then I will take off my makeup real quick and show you the application of this great product. This is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector in the color Light to Neutral 30. And it says it is a moisturizing retinol treatment. It comes in six shades. It evens your skin tone is what it claims, which it certainly does. It is a sheer coverage foundation, which is also blendable. Again, it has retinol and vitamins and SPF sunscreen of 20, and that is a titanium dioxide sunscreen. So if you, like me, use tretinoin, Retin-A, then don't worry, it's not going to pill up on your skin. It will play very well with any of your retinol-based skin cares. Okay, before I apply this for you, I do want to say that if you followed my channel, you know that I love another Neutrogena foundation called Healthy Skin. And I have worn this for probably six, seven, eight years, and it is one of my favorites, even I would say as good as or better than a lot of my high-end foundations. But I noticed that a couple of years ago, I could apply it and it looked very natural in my opinion. It didn't make me look older. And then maybe in the last month or so when I've been applying this, because when I'm running out the door, usually I just go ahead and apply this Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation. I did notice that all of a sudden my skin was looking craggier. My skin had an uneven texture when I was using this foundation. Not that I'll never use it again, because if you really work with it, you can kind of smooth it out, but it was no longer the effort-free foundation that it had been earlier. And one day last week, I was heading off to work and I just grabbed this out of my foundation stash and I applied it and immediately I was stricken by the fact that it covered up what I needed to have covered up, but it made my skin just look more like skin, young and dewy and healthy. So let me go ahead and take off this makeup and I'll come back and apply this for you. And this is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector in Light to Medium 30. And this is a sheer coverage foundation that is blendable and buildable. It comes in six shades. It has retinol, vitamins, and SPF 20. And that is a titanium dioxide sunscreen. So it plays very well with our skincare if we use retinols and that kind of thing. Absolutely love this. And I'll show you in just a minute the application of this. And I think you'll be amazed at how beautiful it looks on the skin. And it is only $11. And I had people at work when I went to work, they said, what have you been doing to your skin? It looks really good today. And that's what you want when you have a great foundation, not what a pretty foundation, but wow, your skin looks really pretty. What are you doing? Okay, I'm pulled in here. I do have eye makeup on, but that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and show you the application of this foundation. So what I do is I take my BK Beauty Foundation brush. This is the 101, which is an iconic brush, amazingly enough. Spray it with a little Urban Decay setting spray. Then I'm going to go in with my Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector. And I love it. You can see it's kind of messy here because I've been using it every day for the last week. But basically I love the little pump that it has because it keeps the product away from oxygen. You can easily just add the amount that you want to your skin. And one trick that you probably already know, but I was guilty of this, is applying too much foundation. So I just put one little drop 
in every area of my face on each quadrant and look at how that blends into your skin. And I deliberately didn't wear any primer because I wanted you to see how beautiful the finish is. You might think it was the primer. Otherwise, I've been going through some pretty good primers lately. But anyway, I just think that is absolutely beautiful. And this brush doesn't tend to streak, but go in at the very end and just buff everything out. Okay, there is that foundation coverage and you can't tell yet, but it is a really beautiful foundation. And I like the fact that it is sheer coverage, but buildable. Now, next I'm going to go in with another of my little wonder workers that I use all the time. This is the Pixie by Petra Peach Corrector. And it's going to hopefully correct the under eye circles that I have going there. And I start on the inside here and peach nulls out black. And so it just brightens the area and it just makes it look more flawless. There's that side with the peach on it. And I do have a vein there that I'll have to cover with something a little more, a little more in depth, but then this side has not been done. And I'll just go in with peach corrector there. I love this product. I just purchased it again. It's like $12 and the first one lasted a whole year. So it's been a truly, truly great product. Okay, that is how that looks so far. And because I do have that little black prominent vein, I am going to go in with my workhorse, which I've had for years, well before YouTube. And this is the Derma Blend Under Eye Concealer in the color Light. And there it is. And I'll just take a little bit of that. I'm looking in my mirror here. It just covers up that black vein there. Patting it out with your fingers also helps because the heat in your fingers just kind of blends that in a little bit. Next, I'm going to go in with some Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. And this is in the color, what is it? I can't see the color. My contacts aren't strong enough right now, but I'll put it below the video. It's probably a light, a light natural, or maybe even a buff. Those are kind of the colors that I, that I mostly wear. When I get into the mediums, it looks too orange and too, too tan on my skin. I'll just go ahead and buff that in a little bit with the kitten brush. And this is part of a brush set that I think is on sale right now that they call, I don't know, the iconic brushes, the, what's the word? I can't remember what it's called. Oh, Holy Grail, Holy Grail. Yay, carnivore, you're helping me with my memory. Every time I remember something that I don't think I would have remembered, I think it's the carnivore. I don't know if that's really true. I've been on carnivore for about a month, but I think my memory is actually getting a little better on that, which makes me happy. Okay, I'm going to be using the third brush in the BK Beauty Holy Grail set. And this is the 109, which is called the Small Foundation Brush. And I'm going to be using a product that I just got, and this is the Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Powder. And I'm still figuring it out. It is a white powder and it is supposed to brighten, which I think it really does. Probably because it is a white powder. Put a little bit here. Now I'll just be going in with the BK Beauty 106 brush and just putting that over the rest of my face just to blend that foundation in a little bit better. Next, I'll be going in with one of my favorite drugstore blushes, and this is the CoverGirl True Blend blush in the color Love Me. And it's kind of a little, kind of a peachy pink, which is a good, good color for me. And I'm going in with the Angie blush brush. And again, keep the, keep the blush high on the cheekbone because as we get older, we lose bone and our face falls, which is fun. <laughs> But to keep it up, it's best to apply your blush higher on the cheekbone. Sometimes I do this with it and just apply it. And then I'll go through buff, 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 buff. Put a little bit up there for some reason. Next, I'm going to be going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Nude Gasm Palette. That is that palette. Love this palette. As you can see, it's very well used. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a line there to pull the cheekbones in. A little bit along there. Then I'm going to go along the sides of the nose. Tip of the nose, just to kind of narrow that off a little bit. I've been trying to remember to do my nose exercise because as we get older, that tip widens out. And I think mine is a little bit 
So I need to remember to do that. Within about five days, it totally helps the tip of your nose get nice and nice and nice and defined again. Okay, and this is the this is the highlighter brush. Little highlighter there, little highlighter there. I forgot using bronzer on my forehead, so I'll go I'll go ahead and use both of those. And that looks a little strident there but I'm going to go in in just a minute. Whoa, that looks weird. Let me get my blender brush. Okay, this is actually a Real Techniques sculpting brush, looking at my mirror down here, but it just kind of blends it in a little bit. And then I also sometimes will take it over the blush, sides of my nose, just to make sure you're not wearing chocolate bars. Okay, now I'm going to be applying one of my favorite lip combos lately, and this is the Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in the color Nude, and if you only have one lip liner, this is it, girls. It's fantastic, it lasts a long time. It's a beautiful, beautiful, natural looking lip color. Gives you a little bit of that brown look, which I think is attractive. Okay, there's that lip liner. And then I'm going in with the L'Oreal Color Riche Lipstick in the color Sugar Plum. And there is Sugar Plum. I'll put a little bit of it on my hand. I'll swatch it there. Very, very beautiful, rosy nude. And last, I think I'm a little glowy in places, so I'll be going in with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. It's a loose powder, there it is. Absolutely a beautiful, very reasonably priced powder. I'll just go in with this little tiny brush here and just go over in the areas that I feel like I'm a little glowy. But doesn't that have a nice blurring effect? I love that. Kind of stick on the T-zone. If you're like me and you're oiling the T-zone, that's a good place to stay. Well, here's a final look at the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector. And I absolutely love this, and I think you would love it too. If you, like me, are a little bit older and are tired of looking craggy and older with most foundations, I think you might really like to give this a try. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And in this case, I don't have any cards. I just wanted to tell you about something that I did this morning that illustrates a really good cognitive behavioral technique that you can use to help your life be happier. And that is that this is a Friday here in Wichita, it's about one o'clock, I guess that doesn't matter. But this morning was the day that I was supposed to wash my hair and do a deep condition. And quite honestly, whenever I do the deep condition, which I try to do once a week, that's the way it is in my beauty schedule. And I'll link a video showing my beauty schedule and how I get it all in below if you're curious about that. But basically, I never look forward to doing it. I've just gotten out of a nice warm bed and the idea of getting my hair all wet and sticking it up in you know, a bunch of hair goop and walking around like that for an hour and exercising looking ugly with the, with the hat on my head, the little bonnet on my head, I never really look forward to that. And so I had my normal thought, which is, oh gosh, it's Friday. I have to condition my hair. I should condition my hair, but I really didn't want to. And then I remembered that I've been reading Dr. Lance Parker's book on cognitive behavioral therapy, and it is so simple and gives you totally great, simple techniques that you can use on a daily basis to immediately start to improve your emotional life, which is great. It is called How to Transform Your Mind. And fundamental one is to get rid of should statements, should statements, like I had when I thought I should condition my hair this morning. He says in his book that should statements just never make you happy. When you say, I should condition my hair, if you don't do it, then you feel bad because you should have done it. And I've had plenty of mornings where I just decided not to do it and I did feel kind of like bad about it. Or if you go ahead and do the thing that you should, once you've done it, there's no big happiness boost because you should have done it. It's kind of like a nothing in terms of increasing your happiness. So I remember that. I thought about this book because I'm reading it every morning as part of my devotion time. I said, no, I prefer to condition my hair this morning. 
I really want my hair to not look like a Brillo pad. I just had it colored the other day and I told her I wanted it light and she said, oh, well, we'll try not to have it break off. And I thought, ooh, I want to condition my hair. Not I should, but I want to. And so I changed my thinking this morning to, I want to condition my hair. And I thought of a few reasons why I don't want my hair to break off. I want my hair to be nice and silky and smooth. I want hair that is in good condition. And I went ahead and I did the hair conditioning and afterwards I just felt so good because I realized that I had set a little objective to condition my hair and that I got certain benefits from it and I did it and I just felt great. So friends, just for today, as we're going through our day, let's monitor our self-talk. And in those moments when we say, oh, I should do that, I really should do that, let's have a little bell go off in our head and let's say, no, wipe out the should and say, what do I prefer to do? I prefer to do that. And then once you do it, you feel great because you set out an objective and you accomplished it. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.